Hi guys, Glenn here, your favorite business waffler, and I'm here today to talk to you about Q4 preparations and what you need to do. Okay guys, so anybody who is in the e-commerce space or has ever been in the retail space at all will understand that Q4 is by far the most important three months of the entire year. So for anybody who doesn't understand what Q4 is, if you look at the year, you split it into four, you have four three month sections. Q4 is the last three months of the year. So October, November, December. We are currently in October. So sales are starting to pick up slightly. People are starting to think about what they wanna buy as Christmas presents. Restaurants are starting to advertise taking Christmas bookings. So as soon as the weather kind of shifts and becomes a little bit colder, everybody is out to start grasping that Christmas market and grasping those Christmas sales. So today I'm gonna to come to you and tell you about my Q4 preparations, the steps that I've put in place. This being my third Christmas working for myself. But prior to working for myself, I worked for four years at big retailers in the commercial function. So I was buying the products that these retailers were selling. And during that time, planning on Christmas, we pretty much spent the whole year planning for Christmas, landed Christmas, came out of it, and then spent the entire year planning for Christmas again. But we don't have to look at it quite as far in advance as, uh, as the big retailers do when you're a reseller or a small business, but you do need to put these considerations in place because these next three months are so, so important. And I would say personally, that Q4 would also consist of January as well. Because when you're a reseller or you are doing retail arbitrage or online arbitrage, uh, retailers come out of these, these cycles, these Christmas cycles with stock they planned. Some of it they might have not been able to sell through. So January also presents huge opportunities in terms of the January sales for when retailers haven't been able to sell what they wanted to sell. Therefore, there is loads of stock floating around in the market that they need to cut the price of uh, to bring that cash back into their business to go and buy the stuff for the new season, the January season, uh, and looking forward to summer. So I would say it's probably a four month Q4 when it comes to reselling because of those products are just out there flying around, ready for the taking. So today I'm gonna to split this video into four sections and those sections are gonna be space, supplies, technology, and transport. You need all of these things in place and if you've got them ready, then the rest of it is just about thinking what products you're buying. Am I overstocked on this? Am I understocked on this? Where are the opportunities presenting themselves and researching? But you need those four things in place first to enable you to go and, and look out and be outward looking rather than inward looking at your business and what you're doing and how you're running it. So section one, space. Make sure you've got an adequate amount of space allocated and that you've got it set out in a way that you can process stock and you can move through the stock, you can find your inventory. Doesn't matter whether you're eBay or whether you're Amazon, you need that space set up. Now I'm assuming if you're an eBay reseller, you should in theory already have a stock management process whereby when something sells, there's an indicator within that, whether you do it as your particular seller SKU, that tells you where that product is. So you can go and locate it and find it and post it. If you haven't got that on eBay already, I'd suggest you do it. There's some good videos out there on it. Corey Barlow just did a good one about his inventory management system. So worth checking that one out. But essentially, if you're just starting out and you're just new to the reselling game or this e-commerce selling products online, then you probably need to consider this because as you move into Christmas, there's gonna be bigger opportunities to buy more product and you're gonna very quickly get overrun. So to put things in perspective, Christmas last year was pretty much handled in this room we're in right now. So I've got an office upstairs, which I'm gonna go give you a tour for, which works great for the rest of the year. But then as soon as it comes to Christmas, we were just completely overrun with stock and we needed to use living room space to handle the amount that came in. So the biggest order I placed, we got five pallets worth of stock and it was just ridiculous amounts. So we had it all scattered around and we needed to organize it to check everything had arrived, uh, then sort out if anything had been damaged and then we go ahead and label and ship off to Amazon. But the room upstairs was just not adequate for that. It is very good and it does very well most of the year, although we're outgrowing it now, um, but there's big things on the horizon. I think we might be getting some new space, but I'll, um, but I'll fill you in as to how that progresses. But if it does happen, it will happen soon. So potentially next video could be that, but for the time being, 
what I've done is I've gone through and I've cleared out all of the crap in that room. Uh, the paperwork was all over the place. So I had a good old sesh where I just sorted it all out. Say this is for this bank account, this is for this bank account. These are invoices, these need to go into my account. So we've just got everything sorted. So I'll take you upstairs and give you a tour of how the room's laid out. So this is the office space. So as you can see, this side, racking, all the way up here. This used to be filled with um, eBay stuff that was just like cluttering up the place was completely unnecessary. So what I've done, all of the eBay stuff that needs to be listed is now on the top out of the way. So we can fill this area with products that need um, shipping and this area down here. Filing cabinet, which is now completely organized. I know there's a bit of paperwork out right now, but it was a lot worse. We're currently doing books, um, but all that stuff's been organized now into the filing cabinet, everything's sorted. Supplies wise, make sure you've got your bubble wrap and your packing paper. Now, if you to look under the desk here, we've got loads and loads of paper, loads and loads of paper supplies. Um, got our labels from the label printers down here, tape. Uh, here we've got poly mailers, all kinds of poly mailers. Here is our little supplies shelf that sits above the computer. So we've got our tape gun, hole punch, pens, you know, paper clips, all useful stuff. This happens, so that's motivation. Highlighters, got gloss seals. I'm not even putting the camera in the right way. Gloss seals, uh, suffocation warning labels, envelopes, in case we need to post stuff, barcode scanner, hair dryer, goo gone, Stanley knife. Got all our accounts filed up here by year, and then I've got camera equipment up here, which is just for digital marketing company, etc. So that is the space. We are now set to move product in and out quite swiftly. Now that section there also tied in very, very nicely with supplies. You need all of the supplies in abundance because if an opportunity presents itself and you go hell for leather buying a certain product or picking up certain things or your sales just start taking off, if you haven't got the means to process that stock or ship that stock, then you're left in a very sticky situation. Now Christmas is crazy. Everyone steps in and goes really hard. So you need to make sure you're ahead of the competition because essentially all this is is making sure you're more agile than other people out there. If you're more agile, you're going to get the highest prices and you're going to sell through that stock without leaving you with overstocks or having to sell anything through at a loss or having to do your own January sale yourself. So having the supplies there available allows you to bring that stock in, process it and get it out as fast as you physically can. Having the supplies in place is very, very important. Now, if you haven't seen it, I've gone into great, great detail about supplies you need and the equipment you need for Amazon FBA. It's a really good video, it's well thought out. I recommend you go and check it out. It took about four days to produce, so really proud of it. But in there, I detail every single piece of equipment and why you would need it for Amazon FBA. I will link that here or here, wherever that may be. Check that out, that's the stuff that you need. So what I've done is I've gone through and I've looked at all of the supplies I've got, pretty much everything in there. Apart from like the staple stuff, which you just use day in, day out, like your tape guns, your, your, you know, your measuring tapes, your Stanley knives. But for the consumable stuff, I've made sure I've got twice as much as I think that I'll need. Because imagine I buy £10,000 worth of something and I need to get them out as fast as possible to beat the competition. If I've run out of poly bags or I've run out of tape for my tape gun or I don't have enough boxes, I am scuppered really are scuppered and that could put me at a serious disadvantage and co could cost hundreds of pounds. Hundreds of pounds in lost selling price of a product because if the competition floods in, the whole market price will come down and I need to, to match that. So if I had 100 units and I've lost a pound off each unit, that's cost me 100 pounds. So making sure you've got the supplies ready, very, very important. If you're an eBay seller, then you need to make sure you've got the supplies in order to ship everything that you've got. So whether that be your poly bags, your poly mailers, your boxes, get out now. Get out to those places where you source your boxes and make sure you're fully stocked up. Even if it's an absolute eyesore in the corner of the room, just get them in and put your mind at ease. Section three, I'm gonna talk about technology. Now technology is the most important thing when you're in this reselling, online, e-commerce position, such as me, because technology is the thing that's enabled us to run these businesses. Back in the day, back in the days, our parents used to take care of us. You solely relied on going out, making contacts, talking to people, going to a market to sell your products, setting up a shop. But as you know, being an e-commerce business, such as mine, the internet and technology and the way that I use it is so, so, so important. 
So in order to make sure I'm ahead of the game, what I've done is I have three computers in the house. I have a desktop computer, which you probably saw upstairs in the office tour. That's set there, that's ready to go. I have a very high spec laptop, one that is just so fast and so portable and so agile, that it's fantastic. And then I have a backup laptop, which um, my mother uses to do our books and account keeping because my mother is the other employee slash shareholder in this business. So we have those three available. There's also more computers kicking around in the house, but they're probably very slow. So wouldn't necessarily want to use them, but there is more backups available if we need them. So obviously technology is very, very important. If you're running on a really slow, clunky computer, probably just upgrade. Let me show you the Surface computer. Now that computer is so good. So I bought it two years ago. It's barely slowed down at all. There's not a very big hard drive on it, but that's because it's an SSD hard drive. An SSD hard drive has no moving parts in it and is the fastest hard drive you can get. Don't quote me on that. There might be a faster one out there, but it will probably cost a bomb. So you've got your HHD, which is your standard hard drive, and then your SSD, which is your fast, no moving parts hard drive. There's a no moving parts hard drive in that because I don't need many files. I need to be able to use a computer very fast and any files I have are stored on Dropbox or they're stored in Google Drive or they're stored in OneDrive. So that's Google, Microsoft and Dropbox's cloud services. So I use those. I've got free storage across all three of them and I utilize them for different aspects of my business. So if I need one thing, I'll go onto OneDrive. If I need another thing, I'll go into Google Drive. And if another thing, I'll go into Dropbox. It's all there in the cloud waiting for me. And because they're in the cloud, I don't need to clog up my computers with all of these files. So that's the beauty of having an SSD computer. This particular Surface computer is so, so good. Thoroughly recommend it to anyone. It's lasted me two years, it's barely slowed down at all because of the SSD hard drive in it. And it's got a, very, it's got a nice high spec i5 processor, but a fast, good one that Microsoft approve. It's touch screen and it's the perfect size for traveling around. I've even got a, a little neoprene, I've got it here actually. This is the case that I put it in. It's like a, a small leather neoprene case. It's like a file of facts. Nobody thinks you're wielding an expensive laptop because it looks like I've just got a load of paper in here, which I do at the back, but it's just so portable and it's so useful. So I thoroughly recommend getting yourself a nice computer. And if that's a Surface, I, I would recommend it. I really would. And the fact that I bought it two years ago, I would still buy it now. I would still buy it because the price has come down, but it's still just a very nice high spec computer. Plus it's a two in one, which means you can remove the uh, the keyboard from it and then it effectively just becomes a tablet if you just wanna browse, watch your, watch your TV or whatnot. Very good. Desktop computer is just great, it's functional, it stays in the same place. It's always there when I need it. I can plug my barcode scanner into it, I can have all kinds of stuff running off it, hard drives, whatever that may be. Thoroughly recommend getting a desktop as well. Desktop, mobile, sorted. Backup laptop that my mum's got, fantastic as well. I'm not going to shout about that one because it was just a good deal at the time, but it's not particularly high spec. It's just very functional and make sure that we're just always prepared. Another thing I'd recommend is go through and defragment your hard drives because defragmenting your hard drives, when you store stuff, I don't really know all the technical ins and outs of it, but when you store stuff on a hard drive, when you defragment it, it kind of pulls all the bits together. So it actually like allows your computer to access that data a lot quicker. I think someone tell me if that's not right, but I think that's how it works but it just speeds the whole thing up. So just make sure all your technology is there in place and it's just working and it's as fast as you can make it. So I'm gonna go through, haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna go defragment everything, I'm gonna clean up all the files that I don't need, put them in the cloud and just make sure everything is just running slick. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about is transport. So transport is a huge, huge thing if you're into retail arbitrage, such as me. I spend a lot of time driving around to stores, picking up clearance products, assessing where the prices are in the market. And it's happened to me on several occasions where I've had to do several, several, several runs. Now, if you've watched early videos on this channel, such as the B&M closing down, me going and clearing a load of their stock out of their store, I had a Volkswagen Polo, small vehicle, I took the headrests off the seats, so I had the back seats folded down, so I just had a huge amount of boot space, but it still wasn't big enough, still wasn't big enough. And that particular opportunity where I went to B&M, I went there, they were shutting down, filled the car up, came and dropped it back, I had two or three trolleys, uh, and then I went back to the store again, and during that time, I missed a lot of opportunities. 
people came in and gutted the stuff. Uh, the store was basically bare by the time I got back. So the more car space you've got, the better. So now what I've done is one better than that is I've gone and purchased a van. Now, let me go and show you what I've recently done to the van. That's gonna really improve my ability to move stock during Q4. Proper happy with this. Come and have a look. This is the beast. It's not huge, but it's on a long wheel base, which is good. So it's a Caddy Maxi. I love it. It's doing me very, very well. But the beauty of this is, when I first bought this, I used to have loads of racking in the back because it was an ex-British gas van. And what I've done now is I've taken all of the racking out. I mean, look at that. Look how much space I have to fill it up with toys, electronics, printers, whatever I deem fit. So, transport, get it sorted. So what happened with that was my friend Chris came down a couple of weekends ago, he was like, mate, He's probably the person that was so happy that I got a van. He was, I've never seen somebody so happy that I've bought a van. It was just, he loved it, he loved it. Anyway, he called me up, he was like, mate, I know you got a van. My mum's getting married. I want to get him a wedding present, which is a ping pong table. Can you help me get it? So I was like, yes, yes I can. But you have to help me take the racking out of the back. So Chris came down, we spent probably three hours unscrewing all. Here's some photos of it happening. That racking is out now and that's going to go on eBay shortly. It's really good stuff. The racking is great. It's got lights in if you want it. If you want to buy it, let me know. But really secure, but my God, this thing was bolted in with like a million, million, billion, million, billion bolts. So unscrewed all of those, took it out. I've taken the rack into my warehouse that's going on eBay. And once that sells, someone hopefully will come and collect it because I could not be shipping that. I could, but I really don't want it. So that's it. Transport is sorted. So I've got my space. I've got my supplies. I've got my technology sorted, I will have when I've defragmented, and I've got my transport sorted. So you put those four things in place, guys, there's a very, very good chance you're gonna absolutely smash Christmas. So get those done so you can focus on the things that matter. I forgot to do question of the week, didn't I? Let's do question of the week right now. Okay, so question of the week comes from Brian Welsh. And Brian says, do you use a Bluetooth scanner or do you use just your phone? I use just my phone. I think most people probably do. Bluetooth scanner, I think it's probably a bit unnecessary when all the technology is there in your phone. So here is the Amazon app. Press the little camera in the corner and that will open a barcode scanner. And with that, you can then go ahead and scan a barcode on my face. So that's it. Now you can go and check your products out. Comment of the week comes from Mayday. And Mayday says, Poland is sick, my guy. Fact. I'm from Birmingham looking to make pounds. So I've subbed. Love. Very much appreciated. Thank you, Mayday. Thanks for your comment. Back to the video. If you're enjoying this content, drop us a like, give me a subscribe. And if you want to get in touch with me, probably the best place to get in touch with me is on my Instagram, which is at Pivotal Profit. Same as my Facebook and my Twitter, if you fancy following me on those. If anyone's interested in getting some one-to-one -one calls in with me, I can give you some help, I'll give you some advice just to get set up on eBay or Amazon. Uh, just reselling in general with the, the background knowledge of obviously my retail career. So if you're interested and want to find out a little bit more or be able to smash this a little bit harder, go onto my Patreon site, that's linked down in the description below and you can get in touch and we'll set up some calls to, to get you going. But that's it for me today, guys. Best of luck. Let's crack on with Q4 and I hope everyone can absolutely smash it. Keep hustling. Peace.